I've been working with CNC machines for years. I've seen the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. When I saw a $150 CNC plastered all over Amazon, I had to know, is this a miracle machine or is it just another cheap gimmick? So in this video, we'll be covering the Jumitsu 3018 Pro. At the time, I bought it for $150. I think now it's around 190, but the 3018 model of CNC is all over Amazon and I believe you still can pick them up for $150. I am making this video to answer three questions that you all are probably wondering. What can this machine actually cut? Who is it for? And is it actually worth it? Let's find out. So the unboxing and assembly went pretty good. One of the first thing I noticed when unboxing it was the sheer amount of parts that you can get for 150 bucks. Now, as far as the assembly goes, the instructions from Sane Smart right there were awesome. I read a lot of different reviews. Instructions get mixed reviews from other CNC's. Their instructions were phenomenal. It took me about an hour and 15 minutes to put it together. I had a little help from my dad because he likes tinkering with stuff and can't stand me building something without him. So honestly, I have zero complaints about putting it together and it was just fascinating how they can take a machine like this and shrink it down and put it inside of a box for you to assemble for 150 bucks. So that right there just blew me away. Before I get into the rigidity and the cutting, let's talk about the software that it takes to actually run this machine. So all the software to control this machine came on this USB right here. But before I dive into the software, if you're new to CNC, understand you typically need three different components to run a machine, okay? You need the design software to actually design what you're gonna do, so that is called the CAD. And then you need the machining software to draw the tool paths for whatever thing you just drew. And that is called the CAM software. So a lot of design softwares have CAD CAM, both of them are in there. Well then the third thing is the controller interface that actually controls the CNC. It does come with a little thing like this, but this is not really what's going to be running the machine. So the USB that was included with it has a firmware upgrade that is on the USB to get your computer ready to run the machine and download the driver software. And then the driver software itself is called Candle. Just to quickly show you the Candle software and, and why this is important is because you cannot run this machine without the software. Every review I watched over this machine briefly touches on the software and it's literally the most important thing besides the rigidity, which I'm about to talk about. So Candle software looks like this. You can move the machine back and forth just like this, you can do the spindle up and down pretty simply, and you can even turn on the spindle like that. And this is how it looks whenever you upload a program into it, and then at the bottom you would click send and it would run it. Very, very basic, and to my knowledge, it can control a multitude of different CNCs. This CNC runs off of Gerbil, G-R-B-L. Now, whenever I was installing all of this and connecting my machine, I did have my fair share of problems. And this is when I realized I am probably not the perfect target market for this CNC right here. The reason being is whenever things got complicated on the computer, I wanted to take the computer and throw it out the window, right? And then hit this machine with a hammer because I'll never get it to run. Luckily, I have an employee that just loves tinkering with stuff, understands what a COM port is, understands and likes to go on the backside of the computer and understand stuff. It took him about an hour to get everything set up so I can run it. So just a fair warning, if you are just a maker like me that likes to build stuff, doesn't understand computers that good, this part is going to be confusing to you. So maybe get a 12 year old, <laughs> honestly, probably get a 12 year old and they're probably gonna explain it and understand it a lot better than I ever could. Now with all that being said, let's get to what really matters. What can this machine actually cut? Now it claims to cut almost everything underneath the sun except dark matter, including, but not limited to, resin, wood, leather, POM, graphite, PVC, MDF, nylon, cast acrylic, carbon fiber, chipboard, aluminum, steel, copper, and cheeseburgers, right? I will tell you, it ain't doing that. 
It ain't about to cut all of that different stuff by any stretch of the imagination. The rigidity is just not there. The rods are not there. The ball screw's not there. And the spindle, my, my cup of coffee in the morning is larger than the spindle, right? And the last thing is the bits that this one came with were 10 20 degree V bits with an eighth inch shank. Pretty worthless. So I have that. So I'm using my own bits. So if you do get a bit pack with it, just know they're probably not very good. But with that being said, let's put it to the test. And so I have with me some eighth inch Baltic birch, some wood. I have eighth inch acrylic, cast acrylic, which is considered a hard plastic. I have quarter inch piece of color core material, which is considered a soft plastic HDPE and a little chunk of walnut. So we're going to see if we can do any sort of damage to any of this and really test how fast this machine can actually cut to give you all some realistic times. I do not have that high of hopes. Now it does come with an ER 11 collet. And for those of y'all don't know what that means, it can hold up to a quarter inch shank, but I never in a million years will put a quarter inch diameter cutting bit in this machine. I may do a quarter inch shank, but I will never cut wider than an eighth of an inch on this machine because there is no way Mr. Teacup right here is gonna be able to handle that bit. So let me get this plywood held down and let's see if we can cut a circle out. So I was about to start cutting this Baltic birch and when I put this eighth inch up cut in here, I noticed just how much it wobbles just from a little bit of pressure. So just to make sure we have the best cutting ability possible, I'm gonna not even use an eighth inch shank. I'm gonna literally take this bit out of the Shapeoko and it's a quarter inch shank with an eighth inch diameter cutting length. And that is going to give us the best possible cutting quality we possibly can. All right, got my circle programmed up. We're about to run it onto the machine and I have no idea how fast to run this. So I will be running it at 10 inches per minute or 254 millimeters a minute. And with a depth of cut of 0 0.02 inches or half a millimeter. So it's gonna take six passes to cut out this thing that is only an eighth inch thick. Hey, it's doing it. A little chattery. Oh yeah, it's grinding, baby. Fight it! You want it! Now the RPMs, it says it can spin up to 10,000 RPMs. There is not a sound difference between running it at 1,000 and 5,000 RPMs. But there is a slight difference when I run it at 800 RPMs. So I think the max RPMs of this tiny teacup spindle is only 1,000 RPMs. No, they typed in an extra zero by accident. All right, so it successfully did cut out the circle. This circle took six minutes and 20 seconds. You can probably get it down to five minutes to cut a three inch circle. I do not personally think I can run it any faster than what I did because once again, that thing is just chattering, deflecting a whole bunch because of the gantry and all this stuff. So you do get these tiny chatters in here. The next material is cast acrylic. To cut acrylic, you typically need an O flute bit. We just used a two flute up cut, but we're going to use an O flute to cut this because it is the best bit for cutting plastic. Now, with that being said, it only has a single flute, which means I'm about to run this at the exact same speed, which technically means it's about to be going twice as fast as the previous one because of only a single flute. I'm worried that if I go slower, it's going to melt the plastic. And so this is going to be a real test for this spindle. Let's go, baby! All right, 
it did cut everything out. It took five minutes and 35 seconds to cut out this little piece of acrylic. I think it was about maxed out with what it was doing. The cut quality is no bueno. All the corners are chipped. It looks like crap. Next thing we're gonna cut is some soft plastic and I'm actually gonna do a little bit of pocketing on this to see how it turns out. So for this material, we're gonna try to really push the limits. And so I'm gonna keep it at the exact same speed, but my depth of cut, I'm going to go down to 0 0.07 inches as opposed to 0 0.02 inches. So we're three and a half Xing the depth of the cut. And so for my millimeter guys out there, you're looking at 1.75 millimeters on the depth of cut to really see what this machine's made out of and to see if it really shouldn't take that long to cut. All right, let's cut some color core. One pass, baby. Holy snap, he's doing it. It took about five minutes to cut out this star. And keep in mind, this is a soft plastic, so it was able to actually do it at that 0 0.07 depth of cut. But the bottom does look like crap because of how much movement this thing really has. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is this piece of walnut. I am not going to try to cut it in half because the amount of chatter that this thing has, it's not going to be a good quality cut that bit's gonna be popping, it's gonna be loud, it's probably not gonna be good for the machine. So I am simply just going to run a V-carve engraving on it, and just to see how it looks doing an engraving because I think that's the last thing y'all guys probably wanna see. I have a 90 degree V-bit in there. I'm running it at that 10 inches per minute or 254 millimeters a minute. The depth of cut is going to be 0 0.04 inches or one millimeter. One pass, baby. One pass, baby. Come on! So while this is running, the engraving doesn't look too bad. And a lot of the videos I saw on this, the engravings look like crap. I did not have high hopes. But I think it's because they're using the crappy bits that come with it. I'm not saying you have to get my bits, but a good set of bits does go a long way on the results of the machine, right? And so be sure you have some good bits All right, so that engraving took a minute and 27. I wanna do a little bit deeper cut, a 16th of an inch or one and a half millimeters at a full depth of cut, just to see if we maintain that quality of an engraving. Snap, it's doing it. Not loving that as much, but. After cutting these four materials, let's answer the question, what can this machine cut? I think it can cut wood good and, and did engrave it pretty well once you use the right type of bit. Hard plastic, absolutely not. Um, anything harder than acrylic, I would also be weary of. And so brass, aluminum, steel, I don't know, PC, B board, all of that stuff that seems harder than acrylic, no. If you are cutting with it, leave a comment down below if you're cutting with some brass or harder stuff, but I personally don't like it. Soft plastic like this HDPE, it can do it, but the pocket does look like crap. So who is this CNC right here for? Now for context, before I answer that, I bought this machine off of Amazon, I am not sponsored by it, and I'm not even going to provide you with a link for the machine. Here's a picture of the exact machine I bought off of Amazon if you wanna check that out. I don't care. My goal is to get you using a CNC so one day you use my bits or my materials from CIC Workshop. That is my goal. So whenever you use a bigger machine, it doesn't have to be the Shapeoko, it can be a bigger one. You come and get my bits. That's the goal of my channel. That's why I make these videos. So who is this machine for? 
If you love to tinker with stuff, if you come from a software background, if the word upgrade and comport gets you excited, this is going to be really cool. If you're getting this CNC to learn, I do not recommend it. Why? Because there's so many variables like just using the correct bit or the correct bit on the correct material or the learning curve with the software, right? Don't forget a paid software is going to cost you 600 bucks, 500 bucks. Free softwares are going to be a little harder to learn, but they are out there. But once again, you have to know how to work with them and how to program them to the machine. That's why you need to probably come from a software background to be able to use this. So if you're looking at something like this to learn on, I will help you out and save you 150 bucks. Ready for it? This is a spindle. That's a spindle. This is a stepper motor. That's a stepper motor. This is a linear rail. That is a linear rail. This is a ball screw. That's a ball screw. This is a gantry. That's a gantry. That's it. A little computer system to run it. Computer system to run it is on the side of this big one. So I hope that saved you 150 bucks. So what CNC do I recommend you learn on? I, I don't know because I don't know your price range. Obviously, if you can afford a Shapeoko for four grand, I would hop on it. If you can find it on the used market, hop on it, right? Those machines are awesome. This machine, it will confuse you and make you more sad and depressed about CNC technology if you dive in head first and have no software background. So is it worth it? Yes, if you come from a software background, if you like to tinker with stuff, if you want a cool CNC model, and if computer stuff gets you excited. I would not buy it if you are brand new to CNC, don't understand what Gerbil is or Mach 3 is or anything like that, and if you want to make money or just cut stuff out, keep with whatever you're doing, work some extra hours at work, sell wood on the side, make some other projects to buy a bigger and better CNC because this one, you'll just be throwing your money away. So I hope this video helped. I hope you left with more knowledge than when you started. Check out CSE Workshop. And as always, guys, remember, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.